Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, I think we have been able to understand what is evolution. So let us now talk about speciation. As I said, evolution actually gives rise, right, the process of evolution give rise to new species. While I was talking about the Darwin's finches, I told you, right, the so many varieties of finches which were actually formed were then found to be of different species because they were not being able to reproduce with each other. So today there are almost 15 species of finches which exist there. So let us now talk about speciation. What is it? It is origin of new species from an existing species that is called speciation. That is why it is named after species. From species we call it speciation. So how new species will form from already existing old species? So evolution leads to speciation. Some of the examples which we have discussed in the previous slides like the origin of so many different species of flinches from a single flinch because over several years ago when the first time the flinches came to the Galapagos Islands there was only one species of flinches existing there. So from that one species so many different types of species arose. So that is speciation. Similarly the formation of dogs that to so many different types of dogs from grey wolves that is also speciation because they all belong to a different species. Now the question is how speciation occurs. So for this also let us take the example of the same beetles so that you can understand the process of speciation more clearly. So in the example of evolution for the beetles we, we, we just took the example in a way that the beetles were all the same it is just that the color of the beetles changed because of some or the other reason. Sometimes it was their survival advantage, sometimes it was an accident. But the color of the beetles changed due to some other, other reason. Now we will see how is it possible that these kind of changes can even give rise to a beetle which belongs to a different species altogether. So let us look at it. Let us suppose we again have an area where we have mostly let us suppose there are two different localities of bushes which are inhabited by beetles. Now let us suppose in the first locality there are too many crows. That means more crows are present in locality 1. So what will happen? The crows will eat up all beetles which are non-green in color because they will be able to see them and they will eat them up. So we will have more green beetles in this locality 1. Let me call this locality as 1 and this is my locality 2 right now let us suppose more green beetles now green beetles are not much encouraged now in look when we talk about locality 2 there are no crows so there are more red beetles right so because here the green beetles are not much encouraged in locality 2 the process of natural selection right so more green beetles are seen in locality 1 now how this locality 2 was formed maybe one or two beetles from locality 1 somehow they reached the other locality which is maybe a little far away from locality 1 so they are also they have established their own territory now what happens locality 1 and locality 2 they remain isolated from each other. They are not in touch with each other. So the beetles in locality 1 reproduce with beetles in locality 1. Similarly, the beetles in locality 2 reproduce with beetles in locality 2. Now as a result of mutation, migration, genetic drift as well as natural selection, some small evolution keeps occurring in each locality 1 and locality 2. Like if we talk about each locality as an individual, there will be some variations taking place due to mutations. There will be some migration taking place. Maybe some new beetle came from outside. There can be some genetic drift also. Some accidental event took place. So the frequency of some type of beetles increased. Right. So all these things are happening in each of these localities. And this is happening for a long time. But one thing is sure that beetles in locality 1 are not interacting with beetles in locality 2. After a long, long time, it is seen that 
the beetles in locality 1 and a beetle in locality 2, they cannot reproduce with each other. So what does that mean? That means with due course of time, new species have evolved. That means with those small, small changes, gradually a time came when the beetles in locality 2 were completely different from the beetles in locality 1. So this is how new species arise. So you see from this, these beetles, these beetles have formed with small, small changes because there are so many factors which can bring about a change. It can be a mutation, it can be a genetic drift, it can be a migration, it can be a natural selection. So this is how speciation occurs. So it depends on a number of factors, right? So what did we study about evolution? We studied what is evolution. We saw how actually evolution occurs in different population of organisms. Evolution gives rise to speciation. So we also spoke about speciation. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.